Today we're gonna talk about my top money saving tips for Disney World because here's the thing. Every time I see somebody going to Disney World on, especially like on YouTube, on Instagram, it's like influencers who are giving you tips and tricks and stuff and that's great, but they are also staying at like the most expensive hotels. They're doing sit down dining multiple times on their trip and it just makes everything feel really unrealistic for just normal people. Hello guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Hannah and I post a lot of lifestyle, productivity, motherhood, and a lot of Disney World content here on my channel. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, make sure you subscribe and stick around. My husband and I are both teachers and we do Disney World a lot. Because we go so much and post it on social media and stuff, I feel like I get a lot of questions about like tips, tricks, and budgeting. And I have a couple of, not a couple, like a long list of budget tips for Disney World because it's not as unrealistic as you think, but you can't set the standard as like the standard of what you see all these influencers on like YouTube doing. So my first tip when you are trying to book a Disney World trip is make sure you look into what days you're going, what dates you're going, because obviously the weekends are gonna be more expensive hotel wise and ticket wise. And also you need to look into the time of year because July through September are gonna be the cheapest times to go. That's essentially when it's either extremely hot or kids are in school and there aren't school breaks. And honestly, that's the best time to go. Even if you have kids, taking them out of school for a couple of days is not going to hurt them. I promise you they're getting more out of a life experience at Disney World than they would out of my algebra class, so take them out of school, go on the trip, it doesn't matter. Next tip I have for you is to stock up on gift cards before you buy anything. So you can buy your hotel, your park tickets, food, merchandise, everything with Disney gift cards. And you can find some really good deals on Disney gift cards at Sam's Club, BJ's, wholesale clubs like that. Or if they aren't running anything better than the Target deal, you should look into a Target red card. And I'm not out here telling you to go get a credit card or a debit card or whatever. They have a Target reloadable where you can literally take cash and load it onto the card and then buy your Disney gift cards from that. So that's what I have. I can take $100, I can go get a Disney gift card at Target, scan it, and when I go to pay for it with my Target card, it's gonna be $95 instead. And you know Disney's gonna be expensive no matter what. So even though 5% off is gonna help you so, so much, what I will say is sometimes Sam's Club has incredible deals where they'll do a 10% off but it's super rare and if you see it, snag it, but I would not hold out for it. They talk about it all the time on Reddit. It's like a $200 gift card for $180 at Sam's, but I have never found it and been able to buy it. So just get as much cash back as you can because every little bit helps. I guess that's not cash back. That's just like actual money off, which is even better. So the first thing you're really gonna have to decide is where you're gonna stay. And a way to save money might be staying off site, but you really need to consider staying on site at a value resort. I know people say staying off site saves you money, but if you're a family of four, you can stay at an all star for so cheap. And honestly, if you're there and you don't go a lot, like you're not gonna stay at the resort hotel for a long time, you know? Like you're just there to sleep. So go ahead and get the cheapest deal that you can on your hotel. And staying on site is actually not as expensive as you might think, especially when you have to factor in getting to and from the parks if you don't stay on site and parking if you don't stay on site because parking is $27 per day at Disney World if you are not staying on site. If you stay on site, you can take the buses to and from the parks. You don't have to pay for parking at all. Also, if you are staying at a hotel in Orlando, most of them charge you for parking at the hotel and it's like $30 a night for parking. So you're doing $30 a night plus the $30 that you're paying to park at Disney World. The parking fees are gonna rack up on you and that's really, really gonna hurt. Even if you aren't actually like driving, if you aren't renting a car and you're gonna Uber, it's gonna cost you money, obviously, to Uber to and from the parks. It's gonna cost you money to Uber to and from the hotels. Usually staying on site at Disney World, if you choose one of those value resorts, it's not going to actually cost you more money. And this is the trap that I think a lot of people can fall into is they see all these influencers and these people that go to Disney all the time talking about like deluxe resorts and moderate resorts and like staying on the Skyliner and doing this and doing that. 
15 minutes on a bus is not going to kill you. Like you will be fine staying at a cheaper resort and taking the bus. Honestly, no matter where you stay, there's gonna be somewhere that you're gonna have to take the bus to anyways. So if you are looking to save a little bit of money, stay at one of the cheaper resorts that is on Disney property. If you're in that mid range and you wanna go above an all-star, Pop Century is the absolute best. But if you are looking to save the most money as possible, go for an all-star. If you do decide to stay on site, make sure you check the Disney website for deals because sometimes they run good specials where they give you, I think right now it's 25% off of hotel rooms or up to 25% off of hotel rooms, depending on which hotel you book. So definitely check the Disney specials that they might be running. We also use Priceline from time to time to book our Disney hotels because sometimes they do have better deals on there than they will on the Disney website. There's something called an express deal from Priceline that is incredible. You just have to do a lot of research and you have to be willing to take a gamble. So what a, an express deal is, is essentially you will go onto Priceline, you will look up hotels in Orlando for the dates that you want, right? Then you're gonna go over to the location tab and you are going to filter it to be Walt Disney World Bonnet Creek. When you click on that, that's where all of the Disney World hotels are gonna pop up. But the trick is, is if you look at the express deals only, you should be able to match up an express deal, which is essentially a mystery hotel, which I love a good mystery box. So of course I love a good mystery hotel, but you should be able to match it up and figure out which Disney resort it is. I'm gonna link a video for you from Becca Hart that you can go watch after this because she explains it really well, very in depth, has a whole video on it. So I will link that if you are willing to take a gamble highly suggest it. It honestly, it's panned out for us before and we've gotten a Disney resort for like a hundred dollars this year, like a hundred dollars a night. If you don't want to go to Priceline and you want to book directly through Disney, another way to save might be going with a package and a package is where they're going to bundle your hotel and your tickets together and give you a little bit of a discount. But sometimes the packages end up being more than doing them separately. So I would definitely just check into that and kind of price it both ways. And again, they might run specials on this, so definitely check that out. If you do get a package, you're able to make payments on your package, so you don't have to pay everything up front. If you're just buying tickets or if you're just buying a hotel, you're gonna have to buy it just straight out right then and there. But if you buy it as a package, you can put a little bit of money down and then make payments on it from there. Like I said earlier, make sure you're combining these tips so that when you're doing that, you are getting your Disney gift card percentage off. My next tip would be to go to a site like Undercover Tourist if you're not gonna get a package. So if you don't wanna bundle your hotel and your tickets and do it through Disney, then you can go to Undercover Tourist where they're gonna sell you tickets for a little bit cheaper of a price. It's not gonna save you that much money, but they will essentially sell adult tickets for the price of a child's ticket. Disney does also do some ticket offers sometimes, so that'll again be under that specials tab where you can go look at different things that they're offering at the time, but sometimes they do have tickets where they'll give you, it'll be like a four day, one park per day ticket for $99 a day. And remember, if your kids are under three, they are free. That is something that I kind of stressed about when I was taking my two-year-old. Oh my God, are they gonna think he's three? Do I need to bring a birth certificate? Like, what do I need to bring to prove it? You don't, like, calm down, it's gonna be fine. Um, they'll just ask you his birthday and his birthday is on your My Disney Experience app anyways, so it's not that big of a deal. But I did just wanna say that because do not buy a ticket for your child if they are in the free age range. When you go to book these things through Disney, they're gonna ask you to add on a couple things. They're gonna ask you to add on Memory Banker and my money saving tip and just my tip in general is don't get the memory maker. I'm gonna pop up a few pictures that we have from the memory maker on my screen because let me tell you, I thought it would be cute and it was gonna be so much fun and like we do have fun with it, but it's not worth it. I would rather somebody just like take my camera, take my phone and take a picture for me on that because if you're trying to save money, please do not add on the memory maker. And then another thing that people love to talk about, especially people who go to Disney all the time, people who are Disney influencers, they love to talk about the lightning lane, the fast pass, whatever we're calling it right now in this moment. You know, we've had like seven rebrands, Genie Plus, whatever it is, do not. You do not need it. I know that every vlog that I watch, everybody's like, oh, like we have this lightning lane for this time. We got this lightning lane for this time. 
yeah, it costs like $22 a day per person on top of what you're already paying to be there just to be able to have the opportunity to reserve a spot in line, hopefully. I do not think it's worth it. We've never paid for a ride. The only ride that I would ever pay for is Cosmic Rewind. So if you're going to Epcot and you guys want to ride Cosmic Rewind and that's the only way possible, I might, I might purchase Cosmic Rewind, but that would be an individual and it would be if I could not get a virtual queue for it. There are so many good rides and so many classic rides that aren't gonna have super long waits and like, it's just a theme park. You're gonna wait in a couple of lines and it's gonna be fine. So if you want to save money, you do not need the lightning lane, I promise. I will link some of our vlogs and our videos so that you can see kind of what it's like going to Disney World without these things because I just feel like most of what you see, people are going all out. Like people are spending $10,000 on a Disney World trip and we certainly are not. <laughs> so if you wanna see any of those, I will link them up here or up here whichever side it's on, I will link it and you can go watch some of those vlogs after you're done hearing these tips. But next up, we're gonna start talking about food. Food's a place that you can really like spend a lot or save a lot depending on how you want to do the parks. The first thing I'm gonna say is if you are able to get the Disney dining plan, don't. Do not do it, it's a waste of money. People have like this sunk cost situation where they're like, oh, I paid for this dining thing so now I'm gonna like have to eat this. And you get like sit down dining credits and then if you are going to the park and you haven't like been a Disney person, you're gonna waste a lot of your park time sitting down for a meal that's gonna take like two, two and a half hours and it's gonna be super expensive. And my next tip kind of piggybacks off of that. We do all quick service meals. We do not sit down for meals when we're in the parks. We split food. Kids meals are honestly really good. So sometimes I'll just get a kid's meal because they have decent portion sizes for kid's meals. And then you're also able to eat a little bit more like snackage throughout the day that you want because you're at the theme parks and you wanna try different things. So quick service meals, kid's meals, all great options. Me and my husband usually split a lot of our quick service meals because we don't need to eat that much when we're like, go, 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 going through the Disney World parks. We also bring a lot of snacks ourselves that we'll bring in with us, like in our park bag. So you're able to bring food and drink into Disney World. You can't bring like a hard sided cooler or anything or loose ice, but you can bring ice packs. So if you wanted to keep anything cold, you're able to do that. So we do bring like granola bars and fruit snacks and Cheez-Its and stuff that you can carry around, trail mix stuff that you can just eat easily on the go so you're not spending as much money on food. I think that is really, really helpful and it's just convenient. Like if you're literally sitting on pirates and you're like, hmm, I'm a little hungry, you can get out some trail mix and eat some. <laughs> this is also an incredible tip if you have young kids because my kids will not eat like the theme park food. My daughter might, but my four-year-old, no, he wants an Uncrustable. 10 times out of 10. So I might as well just bring Uncrustables into the park with me instead of paying for Uncrustables at theme park prices. Uncrustables are already kind of expensive. Might as well, you know, save what you can and bring those into the parks with you. Even if you're flying, you don't have to bring this stuff down because my next tip is to order a grocery delivery. So you can do Walmart, Amazon, they'll deliver to your hotel. So that's where you can order all your snacks, waters, all the things that you want to take into the parks with you or want to have in your hotel room, order it, get it delivered. My next tip is gonna be a little controversial among Disney people because honestly, Florida water, horrible. But Disney has gotten some water filters. So I do think that bringing a reusable water bottle into the parks with you is an incredible way to save money. Do not buy bottled water in the parks. If you buy a bottled water, keep one bottle and go refill it in the water refill stations because they have like the Brita filters or whatever they are where you can refill your water bottles in a lot of places in the parks or you can at any quick service location, you can get cups of water from them. And in some places like my favorite quick service restaurant in Disney World maybe, connections at Epcot, you can just go up and fill it up. It's like in the Coke machine, like it would be at any other restaurant. My next tip is buy a popcorn bucket. If you like popcorn, popcorn is going to be the cheapest snack in Disney World. And it's so easy and so convenient. If you buy like the $13 popcorn bucket, you get a refill for like $2.50 for the rest of the time that you're there. And we even bring our popcorn bucket from home back to Disney World with us and we use it every single time. It's definitely the cheapest snack you can get in the parks and it's really good popcorn, honestly. I have my list here, so I'm not forgetting anything, 
I feel like I might have forgotten something. So if I am forgetting any of your favorite money saving tips, leave them down in the comments so that other people can save a little bit of money when they're going to Disney World. But my second to last tip is going to be if you're staying on site and you like drinking carbonated beverages, if you like soda, or if you just like sometimes need something other than water, you need to get a resort refillable mug on the very first day that you check in. As soon as you're checked in, go buy it because it's gonna last for the length of your stay. And what you're gonna do is you are going to put that on there. There's a little chip on the bottom and you're gonna be able to refill your mug whenever you are in any Disney resort hotel. I only buy one and me and my husband will split it. So you can refill it like every five or 10 minutes or something like that. So we don't drink a lot of carbonated drinks, but the triple X vitamin water just hits different when you're at Disney World, if you know, you know. And if this is a very specific experience to me, then I'm embarrassed, but it it's incredible. So we'll refill that and we'll like drink it while we're also like, we also have our waters. So we're not like chugging carbonated drinks. So we don't each need our own. So we split one, it's like 20, it's less than $25 for the week that you're there and you can refill it at your resort and then you can refill it at any other Disney resort. So if you're going on the monorail, you can stop at like the Polynesian, you can stop at the Grand Floridian, the Contemporary. If you're on the Skyliner, stop at the Riviera and you can go to their quick service location and you can refill your refillable mug there. So we do get the mugs and we'll make a stop at say like the Grand Floridian in December, if we want to see the beautiful Christmas decorations, we'll stop there, but then we'll also refill our mug there. It is kind of a bummer that unlike Universal, they don't let you have any kind of refillable situation for your drinks inside the parks. And my last and probably most important tip is to pack right. If you pack right, you're not gonna have to buy as much stuff there. So like make sure you have a poncho or an umbrella or something because it's probably gonna rain while you're at Disney World. So make sure you have the proper attire. If it's going to be like December when you go, make sure you have layers so that you're not sweating during the day and you're not freezing at night. So if you're not packing right, you're gonna end up buying like a $10 poncho in the parks that you're gonna have to use and throw away immediately because they are paper thin. They're literally like the ones that you get for like a dollar. So bring your own ponchos. Make sure you have a sweatshirt if it's gonna be cold. Make sure you have two pairs of good shoes so that you're not like breaking a sandal or your feet aren't like killing you because you only packed one pair of shoes and you need another pair of shoes because it's impossible to walk around in Disney World for a week in the same exact pair of shoes every single day. So as long as you pack right, I think that will save you a lot of money like preventatively, like that you did not know that you would need to be spending while you're at the parks. I think that's all the tips and tricks I have for you. If you're going to Disney World soon, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear about your trip plans and how excited you are, but my kids are losing their freaking minds right now. So I'm going to go and I will see you guys in my next video.